What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Stevie, the Black, Sess, T, E, V, Double E, the Black. I'm back, and I'm here to give you night two of WrestleMania 36, my review. Um, I'm going to talk about the matches, and then I'm just going to give my overall thoughts and perspective uh, of the whole thing and let you know whether or not I enjoyed it. So here we go. So, WrestleMania 36, night number two, kicks off with Charlotte and Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship. And let me just say, this match was absolutely great. Um, it was a great, I, I have to say, it was probably the best wrestling match out of the whole weekend. I mean, those two, these two, these two women put on a show, they put on a clinic. It was absolutely great. But... Should we all be surprised? I mean, really. I knew from the moment this match was official between Charlotte and Rhea, I knew Charlotte was going to win. I knew it. And do you want to know why I knew that? Because there's absolutely no reason for her to challenge for the NXT Championship if unless she's not going to beat her. Now, you can say, well, what's the purpose of that, right? Well, the purpose of that is I'm guessing they're going to put Charlotte on NXT, right? And that way she can have matches with amazing people because I don't watch NXT, so I don't know about that division. But from what everything I hear, I hear that their women's matches are great, right? So having her... On them, I guess, instantly boost them up. The thing is, as we say, there are levels to this. So more often than not, she's probably going to bury all those people over there until maybe either Rip Rhea comes back and beats her for the title or maybe somebody like Bianca Bier, uh beats her for the title. But <clears throat> come on, did we really honestly think, like seriously, did you really honestly think Rhea was going to beat Charlotte. Like, come on, man. Like, you, you should know better. Charlotte, what is she now? An 11-time world champion? She got these titles way faster than John Cena ever did. You know, so let's just say that. And it's literally a crying shame that we have to sit here and ask ourselves, will Charlotte break? Because we know she will. Will Charlotte break and get to the 17th world title before John Cena. That's we literally have to ask that question. Because as much as they as much as she wins the title all the time, it's just it's crazy. I mean, this is the second time, really the third time, where Charlotte has won for absolutely no reason. And she's she's just starting to get that feeling, man. Like you just know Charlotte's gonna win. It happened at WrestleMania 32. She should not have won that match. It should have been Sasha Banks who won that triple threat match. She uh her she uh Beat Asuka at WrestleMania 34. She shouldn't have beat Asuka. There was no reason for her to beat Asuka. She beat Asuka. Then she was inserted into the triple threat match. And, and days before that, or weeks before that, she beat Asuka to put the SmackDown Championship in the match. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you serious right now? So she, not only is she disrespecting Asuka... And all of that, but she's in the tri 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 triple threat match, which is which people wanted to just be Becky and 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 and, and uh and, and, and sh uh what's his name? What's her name? Uh, uh Ronda Rousey. That that's who people wanted to see go at it. We don't want Charlotte in there. Why is she in there? Oh, she makes it instantly better. Really? Does she though? Because I saw more people complaining than I saw people say, "Oh man, we got a fight on our hands now." And then obviously. This match right here, she has absolutely no business. She doesn't need to go to NXT. She doesn't need to be the NXT champion. If you have Rhea beat her, that instantly boosts more credibility credibility to NXT. But now, I'm not going to say you buried her in the brand, but you just... Because we all know Charlotte going down there, she'll dominate everybody. But there was no, there's no point for her. She doesn't need the win. But I knew she was going to win. I knew she was going to win. <sighs> now I know how people feel about Roman Reigns when they were mad at him. Now I know how people feel when it was John Cena back in the day. Because I 
have nothing against Charlotte. I don't. I like Charlotte. She's a great worker, right? She's a great wrestler. She's great all around. But you can't tell me this isn't all because her dad's not because her dad's Ric Flair. You cannot tell me that's not the reason why. Part of the reason why. I mean, if she was Roman or John, who were people created on their own, that's okay. That's that. There you go. But. If you can't tell me it's not because of her dad, man. Come on, man. Oh, my God. Like, at this point, we know she's going to surpass her dad's record of 17 world championships. We know that she might even crack 20. <sighs> oh, man. I mean, y'all all remember that joke Big E did a couple years ago about Charlotte, man. That was funny because it was all true. Oh, man. But anyway, like I said, the match was great. It was great. Oh, and by the way, Rhea, she, uh, the screams that she was doing, man, that was funny. That was hilarious. This night, more than yesterday, but this night in particular, it was all about the moans and groans because you heard it, bro. It's like, oh, oh, oh. And, and you know they do that during the match, but because there's no audience and you can clearly hear it, it's kind of annoying, bro, and it's kind of laughable. It's like, do they really sound like that, bro? Like, come on. But, uh, on a fun note, Rhea was wearing a Vegeta, a Vegeta outfit, inspired outfit for those Dragon Ball Z fans out there. I know I never talk about that, but that is my favorite anime, well, the whole Dragon Ball franchise, but specifically Dragon Ball Z, right? But uh, I saw on Twitter, people were like, man, if she was wearing Goku's color, she probably would have won. And I was, I just found that so funny, man. So I just had, I just had to point that out. I love Dragon Ball Z, by the way. Uh, that's why I had to put that out. Anyway, next we go to Aleister Black taking on Bobby Lashley. I didn't care about this match. I thought the match was good, though. Way better than it should have been. And the, obviously, the, the best point of the match was Bobby Lashley. He's in control of the match. And Lana's like, no, no, no. Go for the spear. Go for the spear. So he's like, all right, I got you. So he's getting ready to go for the spear. And then, boom. Black mass out of nowhere. One, two, three. Aleister Black is your winner. That was completely funny to me. Like, I used to think you could hit the Sweet Chin music out of nowhere, bro, and it'd be great. But the Black Mask, I think, is becoming my favorite move, bro. I love that move, man. And just how quick he does it, bro. And just how it's, all you hear is a, oh, and then that man just falls. It's great. But after the match, you can clearly see Bobby Lashley was frustrated. And he's looking at Lana. And so right there, you can see they're starting very early to plant the seeds of those two uh, uh, breaking apart. Not that anybody cares, but you're, you can see where it's going. Um, next, the emotional match of the night of two nights, Otis taking on Dolph Ziggler. We all know the story. Otis was supposed to go out with Mandy Rose on Valentine's Day, but it was hijacked from because of... Uh, uh, Sonya Deville and Dolph Ziggler, um, Dolph was, uh, all over Otis in this match, and I had, and I really thought that Ziggler was gonna win, because I'm like, there's just, they don't, they don't, WWE doesn't really give us a very rare occasion that they do, but they don't give us these happy, feel-good moments, you know, and then Mandy comes down, man, she takes out Sonya, she kicks uh, Dolph, uh, and, and, and downstairs, she gives him a low blow, which allows, uh, Otis to get the win, and then, you know, he get he gets the girl, man, he, he holds her up, they kiss, man, I, that's the point where I was like, oh, man, if we were in the arena filled with people, everybody would have been screaming, they'd have been like, yeah, and happy and stuff, it was great, it gave me a little bit of hope, I'll say that. Like I said before, I'm not a big, I'm not a small guy, I'm a big guy, look at me. So now you know what that tells me? I still ain't got no chance, because all that, all that scenario had to happen. But you know what, in the end, Manny did like him, she did say that. And I honestly, I thought that Manny was going to turn on him and stuff. Maybe that still might happen, because she may be like, oh, I made a mistake. But it was good to have Otis finally have his moment. He gets his girl, it, it, it was great, it was great. Next, Edge versus Randy Orton in the last man standing match. This also, I was sad there was no fans because it's Edge's first singles match back. And we had to have this whole situation that we're in. And 
Edge's entrance at, at WrestleMania, man, it would have been great, but ah. Uh, but what they did, and what I figured they would do, is they fall all over the performance center. They were in the ring, they were in the weight room, they were in the office, they were in the garage type area where all ladders and stuff were. It eventually gets to the point where they were fighting on top of a truck, right? And I was like so hoping that Edge would like spear Randy Orton off of the truck, bro. That would have been so cool, man. Uh, I was hoping for that, but that did not happen. In the end, though, um, it ends with Randy Orton hitting the Kachir... Not Randy Orton. Uh, Randy Orton, he was about to hit a Kachir, though, on Edge. The referee stops him. He's like, no, he has a family. He has a family. Stop it. Um, uh, but Randy pushes him aside. He's about to go for it, but Edge counters. He Then he does a Kachir to him. And... Uh, it was so beautiful, too, the way they did it, because Edge was, like, crying. Like, he didn't want to do it. He was, like, it was kind of, like, the reminiscent of uh, the I'm sorry, I love you, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair moment. Except, because you could see he was crying. He was, like, I don't want to do this, because I love you, man, but you made me do this. You, ha you attacked my wife. You attacked me. I got to do this. And it was, it was great, man. But the only criticism... That I have of it, it was 37 minutes. It was long, bro. Like I was looking at my phone, like, and I was like, wait a minute, it's already 8:45. By the time the match was over, it was nine o'clock. So that was another 15 minutes, and I was just like, bro, oh god, this match was long, bro. And then I saw someone on Twitter say, um, well, you know, since Triple H isn't here, because you know he likes to have this 35 minute match, somebody had to have it. And I thought that was funny right there. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. If it ain't going to be Triple H, it's going to be Randy Orton, right? But obviously, Randy Orton, uh, he loses, Edge wins. It was great. It was a great story ending. Um, I mean, I, I think the feud's over. It should be over at this point, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next, we had the Street Profits defending the Raw Tag Team Championships against uh, Angel Gardner and Austin Theory. And eh, the match was, again, another match I didn't really care about, wasn't really paying attention. It was more about the aftermath of, uh, oh man, what's her name? Uh, Zelina Vega, she was beating down, uh, uh, Montez Ford, I think, I think. Yeah, yeah, Montez Ford. And then Bianca Bier came out and, uh, she attacked Zelina and helped her man out, her husband out, you know, it was a, it was great. I don't know if it was a debut or if it was just, again, her coming to help out, you know, so we'll see about that, but that's the only high point of it for me, other than that, I really didn't care. Next, we had the Fatal Five Way, again, a match I thought was a little bit too longer than it should have been, but, uh, Bailey ends up retaining as we all thought she would, the story though. And this time, I think they're doing it for real. They're planting the seeds of... And, and I actually read this, that they wanted to do uh, Bailey and uh, Shasha at WrestleMania. But because they didn't have enough time for the build, which is smart, they decided, let's just hold this off and we'll save it for SummerSlam. So in the match, you can clearly see. And after the match, oh, they're definitely planting the seeds. This is going to happen. Um, yeah, they're definitely playing the seed. This is going to happen. It's going down at SummerSlam. Um, and I can't wait. <laughs> you can even tell Bailey was like, oh, I, I know what's coming. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But, uh, definitely looking forward to that because we all know about their NXT match. Well, I mean, I didn't watch it, but we all heard it was great. And I'm just waiting for those two to finally, you know, get together and get it on with, you know, so... Next, we had The Fiend versus John Cena in a Firefly Funhouse. So just like the Boneyard match, we're like, what the heck is this, man? We don't know. And and, and, and to be fair, we knew it was going to be some movie type thing. So we knew at least in a Boneyard match, we had an inkling of what it would be like, right? Essentially a buried alive match. Because AJ kept repeatedly saying, I'm going to bury you. I'm going to put you in your career in the grave and all that stuff. So we can kind of piece together of what they were talking about and what it would be. But this, 
we're like, what the heck is a Firefly Funhouse match, man? So John Cena, he 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 comes out, right? And he's in the performance center, but then I guess he somehow gets teleported to the fun house, to the Firefly Fun House. And so he goes through this door and he's teleporting everywhere and he's going through bits of his career. First he comes out uh, in his outfit of uh, when he first debuted against Kurt Angle. Then they had him in there with Saturday Night Live. And then they had him come out as a doctor of thugonomics. And then they had him come out as a NWO. And Bray was sitting there messing with him. I mean, it was weird and I just like I don't know what to make of this and I'm like it's great it's good I like it it's different but the whole time I'm just I can't take my eyes off it because I'm just trying to process what it is they're doing eventually we get to the point where the fiend comes out he mandible claws John Cena and then we see another Bray Wyatt he counts the one two three so I guess that means Bray Wyatt wins the match I mean John Cena was never in control. I mean, he. I don't, it was. It was weird, man. I, I just. I was like, do I like this, man? I mean, it was weird. At the same time, it was just like crazy, though. It was just. Oh, I, you gotta see it for yourself. I can describe to you the Boneyard match, but this you have got to see it for yourself because I don't know how else to describe this, man. I don't. Gotta go see it for yourself. And then last but not least, we had the WWE Championship match. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre. All this was was another version of uh, Goldberg and Strowman from the night before. It was just finisher, finisher, finish. It was F5. It was uh, uh, Drew hit the Claymore. Brock kicks out. Brock hits, a couple, hits Drew with a couple suplexes. F5. And then three straight F5s after that. Drew kicks out of all of them. Uh, then Drew hits Brock with like four straight Claymores, and then he wins. All in the span of about four minutes. And I was like, what? I'm like, this couldn't have been the actual math. Like, if we were in front of people, I don't think that that's what they would have done. But, you know, I read that Brock was ticked off and didn't really want to be there. So, if this is what they're going to do, this is what they're going to do. But they did put the title on Drew. So... That's good. He had his WrestleMania moment. Um, you know, it is what it is. But, I mean, I was funny, though, because as Drew celebrating on the top row, Brock is still just laying there in the middle of the ring. Like, he's, he's like, I guess, playing up as him being knocked out or something. It was it was funny to me. I was like, wow, he didn't, he didn't roll the ring. He's still just laying there on the, on the mat. It's, it's, that's funny to me. But overall, that was WrestleMania. Um... For me personally, I have to say night one for me was better than night two. Night two wasn't bad, but I just enjoyed night one more. Um, but overall, for WrestleMania, if I had to give it a whole letter grade, I'd give it, I'd give it a B plus. I, I think they really did the best they could in the situation that they were in. Everybody worked extremely well and tried their hardest. The matches that had no business being good were good. Although, that's probably because of editing. But, at the end of the day, the WWE, despite what you feel, and they should they have stopped it or postponed it, absolutely. But, I also understand Vince's mindset of, let's just get this done and over with. And then, what I'm hearing is they're taking a break, you know, from all of this. So, um, that'll be interesting. They've never done that before, ever, you know. <clears throat> so, uh... I know they said they taped uh, the Raw after Mania and they taped the NXT. Clearly, like I said, I don't watch NXT. So, um, we'll see what happens for the Raw after Mania. But I do know that when this all blows over, you know, it'll be good to get things back to normal. Um, they even promoted Money in the Bank. Like, they plan on doing that. I don't know how you think they're going to do that. I mean, the stay-at-home order is only until, it's only until the end of uh april but you know donald trump had a meeting with all the sports uh companies and everything and he said august so who knows so i mean by then you might as well just do a SummerSlam at that point but again i don't know how they're gonna pull that off but again 
Uh, so if I had to pick three matches, right? The most fun match, uh, um, I think was definitely the triple threat ladder match. I I, I think that was that that match was great. I loved it. My favorite match was the Boneyard match. That's the match I will go back and watch again. I want, almost did today, but I did not. I ended up watching the Edge 24 documentary, which you guys got to go check that out. That was that that's that's a great documentary. Edge is one of my favorite wrestlers. He's in my top 5. Um I told you that yesterday, I think, but if not, it's Undertaker, Rock, Stone Cold, HBK, and Edge. Like I love Edge. And it's funny because I I started off hating Edge because that's when I really started watching wrestling on a consistent basis was like 2008. And so I really hated Edge and that's how I became an Undertaker fan. But then I just, as I started watching Edge more in his matches, I started to become a fan and I love this theme music. So, and I I just became a fan of Edge. And then when he retired, I I was obviously so sad, man. But uh, yeah, and then obviously the best wrestling match of the two nights was Charlotte versus Rhea. But like I said, I thought, I honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I thought they did a heck of a job. It was, you know, as we like to call it, the most unique WrestleMania. Um, I saw some people, and I, I'm sorry I'm going a little bit too long. I'll, I'll try to end soon. I saw some people online and a couple of videos talking about, could WWE do this in the, in the future of two-night WrestleManias? And, um, look, WrestleMania these past couple of years have been long, man. Because remember, they got two-hour kickoff shows. Then WrestleMania is like five hours, and it's typically not over until like 12 a.m. And we're all tired by it. And I'm always at home, and I'm tired. But as I can't even imagine what the people in the stands are like. But so I don't know. I mean, they'd have to be four hours each, and there's no way they can do it in the same stadium twice. So I, I, I mean, you know, because there's no way Vince, uh, Vince is gonna go back to a. a a venue, a stadium, not a stadium, uh, an arena. He's not going to go back to an arena for WrestleMania. He's only going to do that for B-plus pay-per-views, and that's it. I mean, we're even getting to baseball stadiums for Royal Rumble now. Um, so if you could, maybe they could do that, but I don't know. But hopefully one day they'll come back to Tampa, then maybe I'll be able to go because I do live in Florida. But um, yeah, like I said, my final thoughts. I thought they did. A, I thought they did good. You know, I, I wasn't disappointed. The most unique WrestleMania of all time. Like I said, I gave it a B. I gave it a B. I was not disappointed whatsoever. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What was your favorite match? What you thought was the best match? And what do you think was the most fun match of of the two nights? Let me know down below. And if you're not down with that, I've just got two words for you. Peace out, and I'll talk to you guys later.